we want to thank the Lord so much for another opportunity of uh, being able to hear this word in this meeting and uh, be able to be admonitioned in his ways. And so uh, I hope uh, that uh, we will be blessed by these presentations that uh, our lives will be anchored into Jesus Christ and above all things, as uh, we are told in uh, uh, the book of Timothy by Paul that uh, of the things that you have heard me speak of in the multitude, you may be able to commit them to uh, able men who can uh, uh, who can be able to teach others. Uh, let us uh, look at uh, the book of uh, Timothy as we even start. We are praying that uh, Lord will help us have that electricity back. The book of Timothy as we pray and uh, begin. Second Timothy chapter two, verses one and two, as we pray. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And so we are gathered here that uh, after we get what the Lord wants to speak to us, we may be able to commit them to able men who can teach others also. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, it's uh, another season that uh, we come into thy presence this morning to ask of help in the time of need. For without thy Holy Spirit, no one can understand the scriptures which was authored by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit. And so I plead that uh, I may be under the guidance of heaven and even the listeners, the watchers, that Lord and the people who are here, they may be guided by the Holy Spirit in hearing what they shall hear they may be able to divide the, a word of truth without being ashamed of it. And so bless us this moment and help us to continue walking in thy will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I thank the Lord for the first session that uh, was uh, presented by the result of He touched on some of the things that uh, are really important and the things that uh, the church need at such a time as this. We are told that uh, organization will uh, be able to bring rest and peace. And uh, Jesus Christ says, is it in the book of Matthew 11 or Matthew 7? Come unto me, ye who are heavy laden, and then I'll give you what? Rest. It's only in Christ that we get proper rest. Without Jesus Christ, we cannot get proper rest. And so, gospel order and organization, it is true rest is found in Jesus Christ. If we organize and if we do gospel order according to Jesus Christ, therein is the rest that we need. And then he says, uh, she says that... Uh, the true organization and gospel order will bring peace. Now, think about this in the promise of the comforter in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 27.
He says that my peace, I do what? I give unto you, not as the one giveth, give I you my own peace. If we do things not according to what the Lord Jesus Christ says, then we shall not have peace. And this true peace, when you read in Desire of Ages, it is nothing but the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Because the whole of the book of John chapter 14 is the promise of the Comforter. And so when we are promised peace, we are being promised the Comforter. And then when we are united in the gospel order and proper organization, then the Lord can attend to us with the latter end. Did you know that? In the book of Psalms 133, the division of Psalms 133, this is what we find. And uh, the topic that we are looking at, if you are writing down, is unity in diversity. Because the body has many members, but united as one. Psalms 133, and we are just laying ground for the gospel order and church organization. After the first two presentations, now we shall go deeply into organization and uh, uh, gospel order. Psalms 133, and uh, we welcome Mama Pioneer. Mama Betts, you are welcome. Psalms 133, the division. Behold, how what? Good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what? In unity. What does this bring about? Verses 2, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard or upon the, the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hammon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessings, even what? Life forevermore. Who is Aaron? Aaron is the high priest. And we are now having Jesus Christ as what? The high priest. And so when the brothers dwell together in unity, what happens? It's like an ointment. The ointment refers to the power of the Holy Spirit. And then Christ, who is above in heaven, he gave the early reign in the book of Acts chapter 2. And when brothers come together in that gospel order and organization, he shall be able to pour out his Holy Spirit to the church, which is languishing in, in confusion. There's another verse that uh, our brothers had to create in the morning, Psalms 19. I don't know if people have ever looked at it very well as he looked at it this morning. And I just like to echo it. That is Psalms, the book of Psalms 19, the division of Psalms 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech. And night unto night showeth knowledge. <clears throat> the heavens declare the glory of God. And uh, he spoke about uh, the heavenly bodies being in order. We have the sun, the moon, and the stars. They are arranged in order. And they show the glory of God in that order. The, what the stars accomplish the sun cannot accomplish. What the moon accomplishes, the other bodies, heavenly bodies, cannot accomplish. Everything is in order. And so when the church is organized, actually, it shows forth the glory of God. If the church is not organized, then it is confusion and there is no glory of God. And we saw that the glory of God is his character. Now, talking about the heavens and showing forth the glory of God, it is the heavens that the rain come. Uh, 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 and waters uh, the earth from. And so when the church is organized in gospel order, actually the heavens will be open. And when the heavens is open, then the angel of Revelation chapter 18 will come down with the rain 
and the earth will be lightened with the glory of God. This is in gospel order in church organization. But when the church is running in confusion, one person speaking there something else and another person speaking there something else, and they are not going in one accord, then there is no ministration of the Holy Spirit and the heavens cannot bring about the glory that should fill the whole earth. In fact, God says in the book of Malachi chapter 3, test me and see if I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. The blessings and the deals of harmony shall reign upon you. And so we see that church organization is a very important topic that uh, all of us needs to come in terms with needs to study and know what the Lord is speaking to us. Now, in the morning, I promise to speak about uh, the unity in diversity and how all these things fit together in gospel order and church organization. The book of uh, uh, John chapter 15. Let us look at John chapter 15 as we delve in this topic, laying foundations of church, gospel order and church organization. The book of uh, John chapter 15, talking about these groups, these ministries, the workers and the leaders coming together and fitly uh, 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 anchoring themselves in the stem which is sapping from the roots. John chapter 15. You know, we have been going around preaching the gospel, but much fruit has not been seen. Have you realized that? There's no fruit. And we are just like any other ministries and any other organizations because you go baptize the people and the next time you are hearing, you baptize 20 people and only two people are in the church. What is the problem? The book of John chapter 15, I am what? I am the true vine, who is that? Jesus Christ and my father is the husbandman. Verses two, every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you, verse 4, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can he except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. And so, here we have a people whom God has put on the earth to perfect gospel order and church organization. And this can only happen if they abide in the true vine, the head of the body. For we are told that Christ is the head and we are the body and we have to fit in the head. We have to abide in him so that we may produce much fruit. But because we want to do things in our way, in our own ways, in our own devices, then we cannot reproduce the fruit that is in the head. That is the fruit of the spirit. And so these different branches that you are seeing uh, all over the world, doing different work. All of them have to find their foundation in Jesus Christ. All of them have to abide in Christ. And if we abide in Christ, who is the body, who is the head, and we are the body, you know, from the head, the commands are sent into different parts of the body, true or wrong. That is the truth. From the head, the commands are sent forth to the bodies. And so the different branches that connect the vine, they, they'll be receiving uh, commands from the head, which is Jesus Christ. And tell me, is there a day that the head has told the hand to go forward and at the same time tell the leg to go behind? There's no way the head can tell the hand to reach forward and then at the same time, it is telling the leg to go behind. That, is, that cannot happen. That is a confused head. Is that true? Even a madman will not attempt such a thing. 
we go beyond even what madmen can do and think that we are still in the head. We are still connected to the vine. And so you find one brother saying this thing there, another brother doing something there. At the end of the day, what they are doing does not tally, does not correspond to what the head is doing. And this is how you know that actually the movements are not ordered by God. One movement going forward, another one lunging behind. One pulls in front, and we shall see those quotes, another one pulls the other side. At the end of the day, there is evil surmising. At the end of the day, there is rumor mongering. At the end of the day, there is no brotherly love. And what we are seeking is the Philadelphian love to be able to accomplish the work. We cannot complete the work in the state of Laodicea or in the state of the foolish virgin. We have to come to the state of Philadelphia to be able to accomplish the work. And so uh, God himself is the root of everything. Righteousness, gospel order, organization. This actually comes from God himself. And he has entrusted in his son all these things and given him the fruit of the spirit, which he himself has. And then Christ actually gives us the same spirit so that we may do the works of our God. And so the branches that are connected uh, uh, to this stem have to work in a harmonious order for them to bear fruit. The reason that ministries are not bearing fruit, they, they, they have developed an independent spirit where actually somebody thinks that they can work on their own and another one thinks they can work on their own and be able to accomplish the work. But this is not going to be. And we are seeing that when the gospel order and church organization is perfected, then the Lord will work amongst us as it were on the day of Pentecost. In fact, let us go to the book of Acts chapter 2. The book of Acts chapter 2. And uh, we shall be revisiting this book every now and then when we are talking about gospel order and church organization. The book of uh, Acts chapter 2. And uh, if uh, your Bible has uh, headings, you'll see that it says the outpouring of the Spirit. But what was the prerequisite for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Verse 1 says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were in one accord in one place. Meaning that they were waiting for the same things. They were speaking of the same things. And they were at the upper room experience, uh, uh, upper room having an upper room experience. Are we as a people? united in seeking an upper room experience so that the latter rain may fall on us. We shall see that church order, uh, church uh, gospel order and church uh, organization brings about the latter rain. So unity in uh, diversity, unity unity in diversity and uh, I'll share my screen and go through a few uh, sentiments that uh, the Lord is speaking to us uh, this day. So, uh, the book of Acts chapter two, verses 46 and 47, we read that day by day continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Before Jesus Christ died on the cross, before that last supper, in fact, the disciples were so divided, they were so at variance with each other. But now Christ is crucified and then he ascends to heaven. And then he, they see that without Christ amongst them, they will not be able to do anything. 
Without laying aside their differences, they will be, not be able to accomplish anything. And so they start to seek the presence of the Lord in their lives. They start to put away uh, uh, the differences. They start to study the prophecies of the Old Testament. That is why you find Stephen giving that discourse from Moses unto the, uh, uh, unto the prophets. And he shows the people the journey of the Israelites from the wilderness unto the promised land. And so they were studying prophecies, speaking of one thing, and then the Lord was able to work amongst them. In the book of Psalms 119, 165, talking about unity in diversity, and we are endowed with different gifts as branches, but as the body have different members, but the working of the one spirit, also we are endowed with different gifts, but we have to work by the self same spirit. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. This is what the people are striving. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And uh, the unity we are speaking about and the gospel order will bring about a uh, 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 peace among us. You see how people are at variance with each other with this ministry. One thinks that it is the most important ministry. Another one thinks that they are the ones who are proclaiming the message and they are at variance with each other. There is no peace. There is no seeing face to face. Even in this country, Kenya, there are ministries which can't see each other face to face. And church organization and gospel order has to do away with these things because we will have an upper room experience like the one that we are having right now and seeking peace, seeking to come together. I read Psalms 133, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And so, Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2. <coughs> Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, page 423, paragraph 3. Let us read together. It is what? It is the Lord's plan that there shall be unity in what? There is no man who can be a criterion for all other men. Our varied trusts are proportioned to our varied capabilities. I have been distinctly instructed that God endows men with different degrees of capability and then places them where they can do the work for which they are fitted. Each worker is to give his fellow workers the respect that he wishes to have shown to himself. Now, let us study this gospel order and church organization in a practical way. Are we seeing that happen among us as we stand right now? Mm -hmm. are, are workers giving each other the respect that they wish them to be shown? themselves to be shown. Or everyone is seeking for his own respect. Are we ready to listen to concepts? Are we ready to submit to each other, preferring one another than ourselves? This is what the gospel order has to bring in the church. We each have a work to do. We may be different be of different what? Nationalities, and we shall be seeing that uh, how different conferences have to touch other conferences in other nations, in other regions. But you find that the work that is going on in the USA, it doesn't know what the work that is going on in Africa, the work that is going on in Australia, the people there don't, don't know what is happening in, uh, in the USA, and this Continents are divided. Conferences are not touching each other in the work of God. We each have a work to do. We may be of different nationalities, but we are to be one in what? In Christ. If we allow peculiarities of character and disposition to separate us here, how can we hope to live together in heaven? We are to cherish love and respect for one another. There is to be among us the unity for which Christ did what? Christ. We have been bought with a price, and we are to glorify God in our bodies and in our spirit. 
mind, character, and personality, volume 2, page 426, paragraph 4. Same thoughts express different. The creator of all ideas may impress different minds with the same thought. But each may express it in a different way, yet without what? Contradiction. The fact that the difference exists should not perplex our, or confuse us. It is seldom that the two persons will view and express truth in the very same way. Each dwells on a particular point which his constitution and education has fitted him to appreciate. The sunlight falling upon the different objects gives those objects a different hue. But as we are given different peculiarities, we have to bring those peculiarities together for the edifying of the body of Christ not for self ex uh, exaltation. First Corinthians chapter 12, verses four to eight. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are different administration, but the same Lord. <clears throat> and there are diversities of operations, but in the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. And so if God is giving these various gifts and various capabilities, and the different ministries are not touching one another, then the body will not grow strong, but it will be weakened. We saw that it is the joy of Satan to disorganize so that he may have a body that is weak. And so if we take the different capabilities that the Lord has given unto us and segregate ourselves and fragment ourselves and become independent atoms, that is the work that the devil will want to happen. And at the end of the day, we shall be defeated and not accomplish the work. To another faith by the same spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirit, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all this work is that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members that of what? One body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. This we saw in the beginning. So, balancing unity and individuality. Does it mean that when now we are united in gospel order and church organization, individuality is swallowed up? Some have advanced the thought that as we do what? Let us look and read together this at the screen. This is Testimonies to the Church, Volume 9, page 258, paragraph 1. Together, some have advanced the thought that as we near the close of time, every child of God will act independently of any religious organization. Do we see these things happening? Can we finish the work in such a state? Yes. But I have been done what? Instructed by the Lord that in this work, there is no such a thing as every man, man's being what? Independent. The stars of heaven are all under law, each influencing the other to do the will of God, yielding their common obedience to the Lord that controls their action. And in order that the Lord's work may advance helpfully and solidly, his people must do what? Draw together. So even though we work, even though we can have an individual or opinion, but the Lord doesn't uh, 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 encourage the working of independently of any religious organization. So uh, 90 to 58.2 together, thus for more equal, fitful movements of some who claim to be Christian are well represented by the work of what? Strong, but 
and train horses. When one pulls where? Forward, another pulls back. And at the voice of their master, one plunges ahead and the other stands away. Immover. You think that this can accomplish the work? Have you ever pulled something that is standing still? And maybe it is even stronger than you. Something so heavy. Try to pull a sack that is stagnant somewhere, two sacks of me, and see what happens. Now, you may be able to pull a sack, two sacks of maize, and go forward with it. Try to pull a man who wants to go to the other direction and you want to go to the other direction. Is that possible? No, you may not be uh, able. And so, uh, if men will not move in concert in the great and grand work for this time. So this work that we are talking about is a grand and great work of this time there will be what? Confusion. And that is what? By the way, we talk about Babel and Babylon a lot. Do we? Come out of her, my people. Is it? What are you calling people out of? The other time we were there uh, at El Kefa's time, looking, uh, place looking at uh, uh, coming out of Babylon confusion. And uh, actually coming out of Babylon is not coming out of Roman Catholic Church. There is no, people have lost essence of everything. Have you come out of confusion in your families? Have you come out of confusion in your churches? So come out of her, come out of the confusion that you are in. One person plunging forward and another one plunging back. Another one wanting the work to go forward and another one sitting and, seeing and uh, saying that, let us see how it will work. This is confusion, this is Babylon. And we call people out of Babylon. It is not just Roman Catholicism that we are calling people out of. We are calling people out of this doing of evangelism without order and organization. And we are told it is not a good sign when men refuse to do what? To unite with their brethren and prefer to act what? Alone. Let laborers take into their confidence the brethren who are free to point out every departure from the right principles. In fact, we will like people who only can part on our backs. Is it? The people who congratulate us on what we do, those are the people that we like to befriend, is it? But what is the statement saying? Let laborers take into their confidence the brethren who are what? Free to point out every departure from the right principles. In fact, the topmost of your counselors are people who are supposed to be people who can rebuke you freely when you depart from the council. If I can stand before the people and I cannot be rebuked, then I'm not working in concert with the gospel order in church organization. If men wear the yoke of Christ, they cannot pull what? Apart, they will draw with Christ. Some workers pull with all the power that God has given them, but they have not yet learned that they should not pull what? Alone. So we have people who are doing great work. They will want the work to go forward and they pull with all the great power they have. But they haven't learned one thing, that they don't have to pull what? Alone. There are ministries which are independent. They are doing one. They want to go forward but they do not realize that they have to join with other ministries. And we are not talking about ecumenism because we shall be looking in, in that. Instead of isolating themselves, let them draw in harmony with their fellow what? Laborers. Unless they do this, their activity will work at the wrong time and in the wrong way. Are we together? They will often work counter to that which God will have done and thus their work is worse than wasted. You know, the reason why we should be counseling together is that we may pray and know, is this the will of God? Is this the right thing to be done? But also, is it the right time? You know, you can have a right thing to do, but at the wrong time. Is it true? So many people are having noble and good ideas and what should be done. Very innovative things, but they are doing even at the wrong time because they have not met uh, got their counselor and uh, they are not 
ready to pull with others uh, uh, of the same of the same mind. On the other hand, the leaders among God's people are to guard against the danger of condemning the methods of individual workers who are led by the Lord to do a special work that but few are fitted to do. Let brethren in responsibility be what? Slow to do what? To criticize. Movements that are not in perfect harmony with their methods of labor. Let them never suppose that every plan should reflect their own personality. Let them not fear to trust another's methods. For by withholding their confidence from a brother laborer who, with humility and consecrated zeal, is doing a special work in God's appointed way, they are retarding the advancement of the Lord's cause. So, the leaders, they should not think that they, they are the rule of the people. The leaders are, should be people who are also able to listen to the ideas of laborers. And that is why we were praying yesterday for the harmony between the leaders and the workers. There is no verse in the Bible that says that the leader is always right. Have you ever seen such a verse? No. There's nothing like that. We are told that we shouldn't be loading over others. The leaders are people who should also listen to instruction and be able to listen to others. Another thing that has retarded gospel uh, order and church organization is this. This is General Conference Bulletin, March 30, 1903, paragraph 34. Brethren and sisters, we have no time to dwell on what? Little what? Different. People make a mountain out of a mall and a mall out of a mountain. The things that are so little that cannot hinder the work of God are the most things that are dwelt upon. And the very things which cannot advance the work are the very things that are exalted. For Christ's sake, to your knees in prayer, go to God and ask him to give you clean heart, ask him to help you to stand where he wants you to be, labor in harmony with one another even though you are not alike. Do you not know that of the leaves on a tree, they are not two exactly alike? Have we ever realized that? But do we work in the same way? From this, uh, God will teach us that among all his servants, there is to be unity in diversity. Refuse a trash can mind. Bring all the pleasantness that you can into your life. Do not make your mind a depository for the enemy's rubbish. Do not let trifling differences destroy your fellowship with one another. Do not say that because your brethren differ with you in some particular, you cannot stand by their side in service. They do not differ with you any more than you differ with them. So when you find a brother, and uh, these differences, there can be differences, but not harmful differences. Maybe somebody is looking at a scripture with a certain eye, and another one is looking at it in a certain angle, and it doesn't destroy truth, but because you differ the way you reason out, it may not be even the conclusion of the matter, but just the initial steps of reasoning that verse. You, you say you cannot work in such a brother. These are the things that has made us have very many ministries and not united one in oneness. Neither pray I for this alone, but for them also which shall believe in me through the word, their word, that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they should also be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And so, what kind of unity is spoken in this word? Unity in diversity. Our minds do not all run in the same channel, and we have not all been given the same work. 
God has given to every member his work according to his several ability. There are different kinds of work to be done, and workers of varied capabilities are needed. If our hearts are humble, if we have learned in the school of Christ to be meek and lowly, we may all press together in the narrow path marked out for us. The reason why we can't press together is because there is no humble and meek spirit among us. And so we make uh, this difference so uh, uh, big that we cannot work together because our hearts have not been sanctified. And so we are told in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 and 12, let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, clip that which is good. Be kind of affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. These are the things that have to characterize our movements in these days. It does not seem possible to us now that any should have to stand alone. But if God has ever spoken by me, the time will come when we shall be brought before council and before thousands for his name's sake, and each one will have to give the reason for his faith. Then will come the severe criticism upon every position that has been taken for this, the truth. We need then to study the word of God that we may know why we, be, why we believe the doctrines we advocate. We must critically search the living oracles of Jehovah. So, at the time of uh, sowing the gospel to the world, this is not the time of disorganization and uh, working independently. There will be a time when we shall have to appear before the councils as a person, as individual. But before that time reaches, before we are separated in that way, the children of God have to work in harmony and in order and in togetherness. Now, the reason why we should be working together is this. No man understands the whole scripture alone. Or no man understands a subject so deeply alone. An iron does what? Sharpens. And don't tell me that you can study something independently and come to a conclusion, a deeper understanding of such a thing. No way. Show me one man in the Bible, any prophet, even E.G. White herself. Her mind was locked until all the doctrine had been set in place. The pioneers started all, studied all the night. No man went on his own to start a doctrine and came and presented it. They all cancelled together. One person brought here another uncle, and another person brought here the truth from another uncle, and they pulled it together, and then their defense upon that doctrine was strong. And so if you say that uh, I have come to a fully understanding of a subject, and no one knows about it, and I can stand alone and defend it, you are wrong. You are deceived. It is only counseling together. And she says that the people who have this habit of running alone and independent, when the time comes when they will be set before councils and told to defend what they believe, they will see how their ideas are so confused. You think you know something until you are brought to defend it. And you know that uh, there are some doctrines that we advocate when we meet some people and they ask us a question, we really, we, we, want, we, we want to now to make a phone call, is it? Have you ever experienced that? This is now the time you want to call a person even you don't speak to, and ask him, have you ever thought about this? But what if you are working in harmony and you are studying this together? That is not the time you'll make a phone call, you'll be able to answer for what you believe. And so, working in harmony, going together as a people, will help us even to have an experience to defend what we believe. And when we are asked questions, we shall not be ashamed. Let the workers stand alone in God, weeping and praying, laboring for the salvation of their fellow men. 
Remember that you are running a race, striving for a crown of immortality. While so many love the praise of men more than the favor of God, let it be yours to labor in humility. Laboring in humility and praying for one another. How often do we pray for one another? Praying for other ministries that they should come to a point we should work as one body. Or every day we wake up, we pray for our own ministries to prosper in the faith while we don't remember other ministries. We are even told to pray for the Sunday pastors so that with the work they are doing, however you may call it a poster, that the Lord may shower them with the truth so that they may reach at a point they may come to the fully truth and you people work together. So, this is a, a counsel to workers, page 79, paragraph 2. And we are just studying gospel order and church organization, unity and diversity. We are one in faith in the fundamental truths of God's word. And one object must be kept in view constantly, that is harmony and cooperation must be maintained without compromising one principle of truth. And while constantly digging for the truth as far as for hidden treasure, be careful how you open new and conflicting what? Opinions. We have a worldwide message. The commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ are the burden of what? Our work. Can we see the screen? To have unity and love for one another is the great work now to be carried on. There is danger of our ministers dwelling too much on doctrines, preaching altogether too many discourses on argumentative subjects when their own souls need practical government. And so the reason why there have been so many divisions, disorganization and disorder, People are involved in arguments rather than seeking practical godliness. And people who don't have practical godliness, they are argument, argumentative. They can't see. They jump from one thing to another. They'll, be ne they'll never be able to uh, uh, achieve unity. And so, when you read the uh, writing page, 63, paragraph 2, this should be a, a common quote to us which says that a minister should be watching where fanaticism will rise. I saw, he says that uh, there are many truths contained in the word of God, but what the uh, church need, the flock need, need is what? Present. present truth. And what is present truth? I saw the sanctuary in connection with the 2300 days and the commandments of God are able to explain our past and present and our future perfect, and bring unity among the flock. So as you are advocating the doctrines that you are advocating, how practical are they to the church? Have you been sanctified in the same truth that uh, you are teaching the people? Why do we have so much disorganization and independent atom? The debating spirit has come into the ranks of what? Sabbath? To take the place of the Spirit of God, they have placed finite men where God should be, but nothing can suffice for us but have Christ dwell in our hearts by faith. The truth must become ours. Christ must be our Savior by an experimental religion. This is 1888 Messages, page 168, paragraph 3. And we are told experimental religion is known but by a thing. The shaking must happen to purify the church. We must have a higher, deeper wisdom than man's to guide us, and the pale surrounding our pathway. The spirit of Christ must be in us, just as the blood is in the body, circulating through it as a vitalizing power. You remember the branches are connected to the stem, and they are sapping the nutrients from the stem, which is getting its nutrients from the root. When you read John chapter 3, verse 34, it says that uh, 
The Father has given to the Son the Spirit without measure, is it? And you know what? We are told God is not, to ple is not pleased to give us anything less than he will give to his Son. That is testimonies to ministers and gospel workers. The very things that the Father has given to the Son, he is willing to give to the church. But the church must learn to have the Spirit of God. A house divided against itself cannot do it, cannot stand. When Christian contend, when Satan comes in to take control, how often has he succeeded in destroying the peace and harmony of the churches? What fierce controversies, what bitterness, what hatred has a very little man started? What hopes have been blasted? How many families have been rent asunder by discord and contention? Now, do we have contention there, down there in Embu? Huh? Are we having contention there, down in Embu? Nyeri? Are we having them here in Kisi? Are they in Malindi? Are we seeing differences in the United States, Australia, amongst these ministers? There are. And how Satan rejoices in these things. In some cases, it may be necessary to meet a proud boast against the truth of God in open debate. But generally, this discussion either or written results in more harm than good. Discussions cannot always be avoided. People who love to see opponents compart may clamor for discussion. Others who have a desire to hear the evidence on both sides may urge discussion in all honest of motive. But whenever discussion can be avoided, they should. God is self glorified or the truth advanced in these compacts. And so we are seeing many things happening that shouldn't be happening among God's people. Now let us read this together. This is a manuscript release, volume 3, page 28, paragraph 2. Together, brethren should not feel that it is what? A virtue to stand apart because they do not see all minor points in exactly the same light. If they agree on what? Fundamental truth, they should not differ and dispute about matters of real, of uh, little real importance. What are the fundamental truths? By the way, can we talk about this? What are the fundamental truths? Huh? It seems that you are not saying they are this. <laughs> or you are born Seventh day Adventist, is it? You know, there's a problem with being born a Seventh day Adventist because everything has been made for you. So, because your father is an Adventist, you are born an Adventist, is it? You don't labor to know anything, yes, Brother Dickens. Yeah, and then the lineage goes like that, and you find yourself you are born Seventh day Adventist, and you will die what? Seventh day Adventist, not Christians. You are born Seventh day Adventist, not Christians. And so, let me ask again what are the fundamental truths? The sanctuary. The faith of Jesus Christ, the immortality of the soul, the personality of God, the first, second, and the third, angels, messages. There are there are six. What is remaining? The law of God. These are the fundamental truths. If the people are united in them, there is no cause for having a difference. So my challenge to you, because we are looking at this thing, gospel order and church organization in a practical way, why are you having a problem with the brother you are having a problem with? Because 
Some of us will be asked a reason why we have a problem with the people we have problems with and we will not be able to answer. If we are united in fundamental truth, there should not differ and dispute about matters of little or really important. To dwell on perplexing questions that after all are of no vital consequences tends to call the mind away from truths vital to the saving of the souls. Brethren should be very modest in urging these side issues, which often they do not themselves understand. Are there some things that we advocate, we don't understand them and we want people to adhere to them, to believe in them? These are only things that cause confusion. Points that they do not know to be the truth and that they are not essential to salvation. I have heard people differ about 144 till they cannot sit together. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever seen that? But what does inspiration say about that? That those who will make up the number, soon they'll be able to know. And this is not a matter that should bring difference. What are some of the things that divide us that actually are not important? If there is disunion among those who claim to believe the truth, the world will conclude that these people cannot be of God because they are working against one another. When we are one in Christ, we shall be united among ourselves. Those who are not yoked up with Christ always pull the wrong way. They possess a, tem a temperament that belongs to a man's carnal nature and at the least excuse passion is wide away to meet passion. This causes a collision and loud voices are heard in committee meetings, in board meetings and in public assemblies opposing reform methods. And I wish we could be bold enough in this. There are people among the ministry which are against reforms. However, truth it is. And as we shall be continuing, we shall, we, we shall get to these finer details of a gospel order and organization. Let us read together, 9194.2. The unity what? Unity existing among the followers of Christ is an evidence that the Father has sent his Son to save what? Sinners. It is a witness to his power, for nothing short of the miraculous power of God can bring human beings with their different temperaments together in harmony with action. Their one aim being to speak the truth in love. Ten members who are working in own humbleness of mind will have a far greater power upon the world than has the entire church with its present numbers and lack of what? The more there is of the divided in harmonious element, the less power will the church have for good in the world. And do you know that, do you know why Seventh-day Adventist was raped? Who knows why Seventh-day Adventist was raped? To finish the work, is it? How do you finish the work? <laughs> if you understand the work, Brother Wiki. <laughs> Unit. Unit will finish the work. Are you seeing ten members who are working in humbleness of mind? Will have a far greater power upon the world than has the entire church. If two men unite, men unite to do the work in a humble spirit, they will accomplish much than a church which is divided. Have a hundred members, one saying this and one. You know, 
the reason why the Jewish nation missed on the first coming of Jesus Christ, they had almost seven sects. We had the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, and all these disconduct groups. They only came to unite to kill Christ. And why? Another group believed there is no resurrection of the dead. Another group believed there is no angels. Another group believed that there is no marriage. Another group believed this and another group believed that. And so when Christ came with all these harmonious teachings, because they were not united in truth, the only thing they could unite in is to kill Christ. And this is what is happening. We are told that the trials of the children of Israel at the first coming of Jesus Christ will be the same trials prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And the more you see this, this, uh, this uh, disorderliness and uh, this unity amongst workers, the more you know that we are near at the end. How do we treat others who differ with us? This is evangelism, 638 paragraph 5, or youth instructor, December 9, 1895. Those who differ with us in faith and doctrine should be treated what? How should they be treated? Kindly. Kindly. They are the property of Christ and we must meet them in the great day of final account. We shall have to face one another in the judgment and behold the record of our thoughts, words, and deeds, not as we have viewed them, but as they were in truth. God has enjoined upon us the duty of loving one another as Christ has loved us. But how often do we treat those who differ with us? Until we cannot be organized and walk uh, together in unity. I'm coming to an end. I see um, past five minutes. Another problem that we find among those people who are not united and who are not organized to finish the work, 5T, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, 534. And this is what Brother Brian was raising, uh, uh, I think outside in, or here. You were you are talking about it yeah, when you were eating there. Look at this. No one has what? A right to start out on his own responsibility and advance ideas in our papers on Bible doctrine when it is not when it is known that others among us hold different opinions on the subject and that it will create what? The first day Adventists have done. Who are the first day Adventists? Huh? Brother Brian, are you sure? First day Adventists are nominal Adventists. Yeah, they are semi keepers. I, I, I challenge you on that. Nominal Adventists are, are Laudations <laughs> in some quotes. Or uh, uh, Seventh day Adventists who are local. So the first day Adventists print out things which differ. This should not be happening among the Seventh day Adventists. Each has followed his own independent judgment and sought to present original what? Ideas. Until there is no concerted action among them, except perhaps in opposing Seventh day Adventists. We should not follow their example. Each laborer should act with reference to the others. Followers of Jesus Christ will not act independently one of another. Our strength must be in God and it must be husbanded. To be put forth in noble, consecrated action, it must not be wasted in meaningless movements. And so, before we teach anything, we consult each other. This is what gospel order and organization is all about. Before you think that what you are going to teach is true, do you consult with each other? Do you share with your brethren so that you may pray? We are told that men like James White, uh, uh, Jane Andrews, never dared put something in paper without consulting each other. They didn't have this independent spirit that we have. They studied 
until they came into Haman. In fact, there is a time E.G. White rebuked the husband for presenting something different from what the minister had presented. The husband. And it was not because what he was presenting was wrong, but because the other minister had just presented something that was different from what he was presenting. And so if this is what the prophetess could do to the husband, how should we be moving among us? Should we be introducing side issues and then we say that we are working in harmony, we are working together as a ministry? And so in, in, in uh, propagating different opinions and different ideas, what happens to the body of Jesus Christ? 1SM, 175 paragraph 1. Our church members see that there are differences of opinion among what? The leading men. And they themselves enter into what? Controversy regarding the subject under dispute. Christ calls for unity, but he does not call for us to unify in wrong practices. The God of heaven draws a sharp contrast between pure, elevating, ennobling truth and false, misleading doctrines. He calls sin and impertinence by the right name. He does not gloss over wrongdoing with a coat of untempered mud. I urge our brethren to unify upon a true scriptural basis. So when the two leading ministers in a ministry start differing or raising different opinions, that is the breaking of the church there. And in no few months, you shall have the followers of so and the followers of the other. The next day you will hear one has formed an, uh, another ministry. And this is what is happening all over Kenya. Ministries are being formed, not because they should be formed, but because some people just dis disagree on something. I remember people disagreed on the book of uh, Revelation chapter 5, and people went and formed a ministry. People disagreed on how can relieving should be done, and people went and formed a ministry. People disagreed on true education, and they won't end up formed a ministry. So we have a ministry of true education. We have another ministry for coming living. We have a ministry of Revelation 5 and all these ministries. But is this what God is saying that we should be doing? So there are main pillars. There are the main pillars of our faith subject which are of vital interest. And which are they? Sabbath, the keeping of the commandments of God. Speculative ideas should not be agitated, for there are peculiar minds that love to get some point that others do not accept, and argue and attract everything to that one point, arguing that point, magnifying that point, when it is really a matter which is not of vital importance and will be understood differently. Twice I have been shown that everything of a character to cause our brethren to be diverted from the very points now essential for the time should be kept in the background. So if you have any, anything that you are disagreeing in a minute, keep it in the background. Why bring it before the flock so that you may be disorganized at such a time when we need organization? You believe that having two meals is right for you, or another one believes having uh, three meals is right. Why should you come to the pulpit to start arguing about that? Keep them to the background. Eat your two meals. Let the one who wants to eat three meals eat. These things that are side issues, let them be kept among these two leaders, but not on the forefront for the congregation because you will tear it. So, lastly, those who are truly connected with God will not be what? At variance with one another. His spirit ruling in the hearts, in their hearts will create harmony, love, and unity. The opposite of these works in the children, the opposite of this works in the children of Saturn. There is with them a continual contradiction. Strife, envy, and jealousy are the ruling elements. The characteristic of the Christian is the meekness of Christ. The noblest, kindness, mercy, and love originate from infinite wisdom, while the opposite is the unholy fruit of a heart that is not in harmony with Christ. In union, there is strength. In division, there is weakness and defeat. No wonder 
Satan has beaten us big time. He has got us where he wants us to be that uh, we can finish the work. And so uh, I said that uh, may the Lord be with us. And uh, if God willing, I'll, be, uh, I'll look at uh, how to deal with uh, those who differ with us or you will get the document and uh, uh, read them at your own pace. I know in this unit in diversity, I've tried to cover uh, some of the essential things that should be covered. And uh, it's a time that we prayed that the spirit of selfishness might not be found among us as a people. And that uh, we may allow God uh, to work in our hearts above all things and uh, renew our walk with him because uh, we have been walking a people who are not united. And uh, lastly, Peter says, I word that uh, through ignorance you did this, said Peter, but this ignorance would not excuse the action. For they had a great light granted unto them. The statement is made that had they known that he was the Prince of Life, they would not have crucified him. But why did they do not? Why did they not know? Because they chose not to know. They had no interest to search and study, and their ignorance proved their eternal ruin. They had had the strongest evidence on which to base their faith, and they were under obligation to go to accept the evidence he had given them. Their unbelief made them guilty of the blood of the only begotten Son of God, seeing. Uh, how actually the Jewish nation crucified Jesus Christ because of this barrier that was within themselves. Now, Peter says that this unity, this organization, and this order, and these varying elements made these people crucify Jesus Christ. How do we crucify Jesus Christ today? By not winning souls to Christ. When instead of gathering, we scatter, we crucify Jesus Christ. And so gospel order and church organization must bring in unity that will foster the looking after souls rather than fragmenting them and weakening them and not making, strong, making them strong. When we united, when we divide the flock into different small, small groups, we weaken them so that they may not be able to be strong and work against the enemy of souls. So in the days of ignorance, God winked at it, but now he commands us to repent. I hope the Lord will continue speaking to us and we shall concentrate on the more vital points that will help us win souls to Christ. May the Lord bless us. Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you so much for in uh, unity there is strength, in division there is weakness. And Lord, you are calling us to come out of the days of ignorance and work as one body in Christ, which is fitted unto the stem and the vine. And Father, that you may work amongst us and outshower us with the Holy Spirit so that we may be able to finish the work. We have been raised for such a time as this, and we pray that we may have the experience that the apostles had in the upper room. And so be with us as we go through this week and lay down the principles of uh, gospel order and church organization. Those who are not yet here, we pray that, Lord, you may be with them wherever they are. And Father, those who will watch this material, they may be blessed with them. Thank you for thy love and thank you for thy mercies. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.